during the nocturnal phase of the 24 hour cycle is very detrimental to one's health. In fact, when we eat can either enhance our health or can diminish our health. When we see light can enhance our feelings of well-being or can diminish our feelings of well-being. When you view light is as important as the light that you view and when you eat is as important as what you eat. Not only did restricting food to a particular phase of the 24-hour cycle benefit things like lean body mass and fat loss and a number of health parameters, but it also anchored all the gene systems of the body and provided a more regular, stable, so-called circadian rhythm or 24-hour rhythm. Um, fasting does good things for the brain. One thing that happens when you fast that does not happen when you eat three meals a day is that your energy metabolism shifts so that you start burning fats and you produce what are called ketone bodies. Fasting is a challenge to your brain and your brain responds to that challenge of not having food by activating adaptive stress response pathways that help your brain cope with stress and resist disease. Exercise and intermittent fasting both increase the production of proteins in the brain that are called neurotrophic factors. These neurotrophic factors such as FGF and one called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, promote the growth of neurons, promote the connection of neurons and strengthening of synapses. Recently we discovered that fasting, by increasing BDNF levels in the brain, this neurotrophic factor, uh, can increase the number of mitochondria in your nerve cells. I mentioned ketones, which come from burning fat, and that happens during fasting. We're doing my work in my lab, trying to understand why ketones are good for neurons. One reason is they provide an alternative fuel for the neurons that boost the energy levels in the neurons. I and mean, you'll find on the days that you don't eat so much, you're more productive. 80% of the genes in your body and brain are on a 24-hour schedule. That is, they change their levels going from high to low and back to high again across the 24-hour cycle. And when those genes are high at the appropriate times and low at the appropriate times, meaning their expression is high and low at the appropriate times, and therefore the proper RNAs and proteins are made because DNA encodes for RNA, RNA is translated into proteins. When those genes are not expressed at the right times, when they're high or low at the wrong times of each 24-hour cycle, that's when you get negative health effects. It's very clear from the research in humans that not eating any food or ingesting any calories, liquid or otherwise, for the first 60 minutes after waking up each day and for the two to three hours prior to your bedtime, that's ideal for the parameters that we've discussed earlier, all the different things like weight and liver health and metabolic health and so forth. Going on with eating. So if you have one meal and say this meal comprises uh, you know, 2,000 calories or whatever, and you have this meal at 6 p.m. and you fast for 24 hours until you eat again at 6 p.m., if you have this one meal a day, why is it better to do that than to have smaller meals of like 500 calories multiple times per day, little snacks. All about long-term survival by making the body freak out that there's tough times. And that's running away, like running away from a cat, like the savanna, and being hungry. Or, you know, there's molecular reasons that all, all this works, but, you know, trust me, that the, the data is very clear that this is the way to go if you want to be healthy in your 80s and 90s. Your body, when you're fed, relaxes. And so if you're just doing that all day long, and I know for a fact that when I am um, not fed and I go and do things, whether it's perform, I don't eat before shows. Like I take many, uh, many hours before a comedy show. And I used to just like eat whenever. I just eat. And, and then I would do shows and I would have a, a meal like an hour before the show. And I don't really trying to wake up. I'm really trying to come on, come on, come on. But I've now recognized... Intermittent fasting has a lot of different potential benefits. For some people, it's a convenient way to restrict their calories. For other people, it's a convenient way to avoid eating. That is, it's easier to not eat than to eat a small portion, so they opt for intermittent. But one of the things that you hear very often is that some people like being fasted because they like the clarity of mind that it provides. 
Here's the situation. Neurons, unless you're in a ketogenic diet, really thrive on glucose. They love glucose. And as I mentioned before, your ability to think and perceive things is actually enhanced by having sufficient glucose in your bloodstream. What tends to happen is that when you ingest food, there's a shift in your nervous system towards so-called parasympathetic mode. That is the more relaxed, you probably heard it as rest and digest, although it does other things, a more relaxed mode that can indeed make us very sleepy. If we have too many carbohydrates, it actually can make us quite sleepy. However, if we have any food, if we have enough of it, that is if our gut is full, it diverts blood to our gut and we become sleepy and we can't focus as well. So a lot of people really like fasting in the state of being fasted for focus and concentration because they don't have as much of that parasympathetic activation. They're just not as sleepy and ability to focus. And in fact, your ability of neurons to encode specific information in your environment, that is to represent what's out there in the world is actually related to your blood glucose level. But there's a beautiful study that was published in Neuron not long ago that showed that the tuning, that is the precision with which neurons in the brain represent things in our environment is actually much greater when there is sufficient glucose in the brain. Being fasted is great for focus and concentration, provided you're not thinking about food the entire time. And being fed is terrific for focus and concentration, actually can improve neuronal function, provided that you didn't eat too much food, that you're not overeating and to not get quite so full that you push your nervous system into this parasympathetic mode and make it hard to focus in the afternoon. So again, I want to emphasize that if you hear somebody out there say, being fasted is optimal for focus and concentration. Well, that is true in one context and perhaps ideal for a certain part of the day. And other people will say, no, you know, neurons run on glucose. You need glucose in your bloodstream in order to get those neurons to be tuned. That is to respond with electrical activity in the optimal way when you're reading something or when you're trying to perform exercise. Well, that's also true. And of course, you can incorporate both. I in fact, as I just described, incorporate both fasted states and fed states in order to optimize my concentration and focus. Digestive process just takes a lot of energy. And that digestive process, after you have a meal, can take up to eight to even 12 hours to be completed. It's not only after you eat food, but you'll be using a lot of energy to process that and deliver the, the nutrients from the meal up to 12 hours later. And so once you cross that 12 hours mark, then you have more energy. That was before that digesting food. Now you have this available for your cognitive abilities. Now you have better brain function. Is that if you fast for a little longer, maybe if you go for 16 hours of fasting, then you start to increase the amount of fat that you use to transform into energy. And when you transform fat into energy, this provides more energy to your brain than when you are burning carbohydrates. The results that your cognitive abilities go up. Is that anytime you have a lot of food in the gut, you're increasing sleepiness because you're diverting blood to the gut. It's gonna trigger the vagus to signal to the brain to shut down your system and utilize those nutrients, can, you know, digest and utilize those nutrients. Being alert makes my life better in a lot of ways more than just the alertness itself. Like for example, one of the things I discovered with fasting is that when I was training twice a day in jiu-jitsu, for example, and competing and so on, I performed way better at, at things that you traditionally would say you need carbs for, which is explosive movements and all that.